With only eight games left of the season, we haven't lost in 10 games and we're still in the playoff picture. If I'm honest, I'm just waiting for the FM gut punch. Hey guys, and welcome to episode 51 of One Team, One Dream, Into the Woods. My name is James, and on today's episode, we have two huge games, both at home. First against Southend, who sit fifth in the table, and then followed by Wickham Wanderers, who sit eighth. And since the last episode, we have played a couple of games. We have extended our unbeaten run. We drew at home to Barnsley. We beat fellow playoff chasing Warsaw and then we beat second from bottom of the table Stockport which was a far more difficult game really than it should have been but we chalk up yet another two away wins to add to the collection this season well those results mean we sit sixth in the table two points ahead of seventh place Huddersfield we are only sixth on goal difference behind Southend who we face in first of today's two matches and then three points behind Warsaw Above that, Charlton are 10 points ahead uh, and Milton Keynes are 12 points ahead. I'd say at this point it's very unlikely we're going to get above that. But just to be in the playoff picture this late in the season is absolutely brilliant. We have a team which was predicted to go down at the start of the season. This is a team made up of players who a number of them are still classed as good or uh, or leading lead two players. I'm thinking this might be a situation of promotion momentum. And so we really need to take advantage of this while we have it, because as the vultures of higher clubs are circling some of our best players, this summer is going to be a bit of a struggle. Not that we're ready for the championship, but this to me is a massive opportunity to maybe even to skip out on League One altogether and go straight up in the championship and try and hold out from there. Other than that, um, I mentioned all the transfers in the last episode. However, I didn't mention Jamie Nicole. Now, Jamie Nicole is a 17-year-old Scottish central midfielder who play is an actual box to box. The reason I didn't mention him was because I forgot we'd actually even agreed to bring him in uh, on loan from Dundee United under 18s. He is actually due to join us on the 9th of June for a season long loan. Now, the reason why I was very confused was because when we agreed it, this was during the January transfer window. So I was under the assumption he would actually come in in January and he just never did. So this was a very weird situation. If any if anybody has any ideas why he didn't join in January and why he has to wait until June to come in, uh, let me know down in the comments. But at least we know, worst case scenario, if we do lose a number of midfielders over the summer, at least we know we have a half-decent one coming in. Without further ado, let's get into the first match of today's episode. I agree with my assistant manager, actually, we'll drop back to a balanced mentality for this game. We're staying in the 4-2-4 control possession, and I think at this point, Bar Fagan may be out on the left-hand side. I've tried a couple of times. I'm determined to make him as an inside forward work. But this is pretty much our best starting eleven at the moment. So we have Huddart in goal. A back for Divine, Tricker, Kirk and Charles. Fiorini, Adebayi, Wright and Alabiosu with Yeats and Taylor Crossdale up front. This out of the two is definitely the more important of the two games. I mean, both wins at the end of the day are going to be important going into the back end of this season. But I think getting a win over a team like Southend. We've already beaten Warsaw quite recently. I think we lost to Charlton earlier in the season. So getting another result, getting a result over another playoff contender is going to be massive for us if we do manage to make the playoffs. We had the first highlight of the match on in the 22nd minute. Uh, we have a throw-in out on the right-hand side. Right now has the ball going back into Adebayi. He goes past his man to Alabiosu. Alabiosu is in a little bit of space. Can he get across into the centre? He goes past his, he goes past the ball back into the centre. Unfortunately, he can only find a South End player. And South End are now going to counter-attack. We do have three men back, though. And they do well. Divine wins the ball to to Kirk, to Tricker. I believe, actually, it was Kirk that originally won the ball. But uh, but uh, but um, Divine picked the ball up, as he does yet again. Hoofs the ball forward. Through to Yeats. Yeats misses the offside trap. Chips over the goalkeeper for number three. 32 of the season there are Premier League clubs that are showing interest in John Yeats uh, this summer it is going to be difficult I think to keep him he's got a big contract still signed up I think another four years I think added he isn't showing any interest in these clubs and he's not showing any worries about leaving but 
he is de- it is definitely going to be difficult. I think during the tra- during transfer window, we were turning down, I think, a four and a half million pound offer I turned down for John Yates over uh, over the January transfer window. And I think it's only going to get bigger uh, over the summer, especially when this guy's now, I think, 36 or 37 goals in all competitions this season in League One is absolutely insane. And that does that goal does push us above Southend going into half time. Wickham have also jumped above Southend as well into the playoff picture. And we come in at one nil from what was a very tentative first half, but we are absolutely dominating possession. Now pump the fist. Yeah, things are going well, but I know they're capable of better. If we continue on like this, I think we will do better. And we have a highlight uh, on the le- right hand side with Alabiusu with a throw in one uh, one on one one to one with Anabayi. Alabiusu flips in and said to Taylor Crossdale for his nineteenth goal of the season at the near post to make it two nil. And on fi- uh, 52 minutes, I mean, we've got uh, still got a long way to go in this match. But we are looking very comfortable against a, t- a team that is a, a team has a good chance we could end up playing in the playoffs. Taylor Crossdale slides it in for said to his 19th goal of the season. And we have two strikers who are firing on all cylinders at the moment. But Southend, no, I barely finished what I was saying. And Southend on 56 minutes have have clawed one back and that is me being punished for say that we were looking very comfortable maybe too comfortable then going into this i'm not sure who was tricker was meant to be marking ransom there fortunately didn't notice his run and he got the free header and managed to uh draw one back to get south end back into this match bobby wright is not playing uh, playing well again disappointing after the fur his first showing in the match just before we came back for the last episode he played particularly well against blackpool has played poorly ever since right south end have a corner whipped in the center ransom again two set pieces and our lead has just crumbled what is it with us and set pieces i really don't understand Blair's in the center who was marking him this time was that Adabai was marking Ransom this time, but neither him or Tricker could stop Ransom from scoring. Going to the last 10 minutes, I'm going to go positive. I'm going to have to try and make another substitution, I think. Right, I'm going to take Adabai. I think we need a refresh in the midfield. And we're going to bring on Callum Hum for his first appearance. Fiorini isn't doing very well either, so we're going to take him off and bring on Curtis Wiltshire for the last 10 minutes. Hopefully a refresh of the central midfield is enough i'm going to break the players i know they probably won't be very happy with that but we cannot go out of this game and we think we're going to a 2-2 draw when we were 2-0 up is just not good enough i mean it keeps us in the playoff picture our assistant says we're unlucky tonight i don't think so point the finger simply was not good enough i find it baffling that our defense is almost green across the board for for ratings in that match and yet we've conceded two goals presumably because defending uh, defending an open play they didn't do too badly but from set pieces we were so poor we now have a three point gap between us and Wickham so there is a positive coming out we have extended the points gap but we've missed the opportunity to better jump above south end and with Wickham having a better goal difference let's hope we do better in the next match and we don't let this playoff situation slip through our fingers well, it's actually been far longer since I expected to come back. We've actually had a couple of games since I recorded the last piece against Southend. Uh, we did actually end up playing Wickham. Uh, we lost 1-0, so I'm actually quite glad it wasn't on the episode. Um, but I made the decision that we were actually going to face Charlton, uh, who were in third place, which I think would have been a, is a far more important match go if we are going into the uh, into the playoff picture with the next episode being either the final three games or the final two games depending on on how things go i might maybe try and do a, a bumper episode but it may be based on the current point situation it may be we only need the final two and going to the league table we are now fifth in the table we still only three points ahead of seventh place which we were at the end of the south end match but south end have dropped out and are still out of the playoff picture as it stands at the moment a point behind wickham who we also lost to but we now face charlton who are in third place they've already confirmed their playoff stance and uh, they are three points behind mk don so they still have a fair amount to play for but if they are going to be in the playoff picture if we're going to do anything at all in the playoff picture we need to make sure that we can try and get a result against them after we struggled 
against Wickham. So we have a very familiar side uh, for the side that uh, faced Southend. A couple of little changes. I had the Tottenham manager come to me and complain about the fact that Osho wasn't playing. So Osho's actually played the last couple of games and done done actually done not done too badly in that playmaker role. So Adebay drops to the bench. So we have Fiorini and Osho as a central midfield. And Fagan is out wide on the left-hand side, but this time as a Ram Deuter, which he's actually done not done too badly with and created a couple of opportunities in the previous two matches. I'm going to dabble with the Ram Deuter just like the big boys do in the higher leagues. Uh, I'm going to pump my fists. Media have given you a lot of credit. Go out there and give them a worthy display. This is definitely a statement match for us to better go out in front of Charlton's home crowd and really, really try and put them to the sword early on. But Charlton have, are coming forward after a goal kick and a shot from range. Luckily, it goes wide. Charlton fire the first shot across the bow, but luckily it wasn't even on target. All right, we have a throw in on the right hand side with Alibiosu to Osho. Back to Alibiosu. Back into Osho again. Can we create something? Fiorini chips it across to Charles, who's on the overlap. Can he whip it into the centre? No, he goes back to Osho. To Alibiosu, passing around it quite nicely. Unfortunately, the Charlton defender clears up only as far as Charles. Back to Osho. Alibiosu, second opportunity. Yeats. Fagan. Fagan on the second opportunity. Tried once with his right foot, once with his left foot. Puts it in on the second chance. 12th goal of the season, putting us 1 0 up. What an important goal this might be go, uh, going into the last couple of games of the season. If we can try and hold on here. Fagan at the back post. As I said, two bites at the cherry. Gets it on the second opportunity. He, hopefully, we have now found the position. Find the positions where we can get all three. Taylor Crossdale, Fagan and Yeats firing all at once. With Fagan out, out wide as a Ram Deuter. We have another highlight here. All the way back to, to, to Huddart. Who uh, passes it back out to Kirk. Looking to try and build from the back. Two tricker. To Osho, to Fiorini, big chip four. Unfortunately, he ran out of options, and the uh, the Charlton uh, Charlton uh, defender right back wins the ball back. And now look, they look to come forward with Stevens, one two with Scott, to Forson, passing it around quite a lot, but not really going anywhere. Big chip four. Devine manages to uh, to win the ball, and now we look to come forward. Fagan with a beautiful ball through to Yeats, who's in the penalty area. It's a tight angle. And unfortunately, uh, I say Beadle managed to stop the ball, but I think he stumbled and went out of play. So it is, it is in fact a corner. Devine with the corner, whipped into the centre, to the back post. Taylor Crossdale was being double marked there. Wasn't going to be able to get to that in a month of Sundays. We have a free kick with Charles. I'm just going to provide some encouragement to the players as we have this set piece. 1-2 with Kirk. Back to Kirk again. To Osho. I mean, some nice passing, but really, surely the cross into the centre probably would have been more efficient and a better option. Chips it forward and we lose the ball out to Charlton. And that's why, with from a set piece, you should really be putting it straight into the penalty area because we've now lost the ball in Charlton. And from our free kick, Charlton are coming forward. But free in the penalty area, takes a shot. And I'm Samuel, I'm going to call him because I can't even pronounce his surname, has drawn Charlton level. And from what was a fairly simple, st straightforward set piece where he should have put it straight into the penalty area, decided to start messing around with it on the halfway line. We lose the ball and Charlton draw level. We have a corner with Devine. Hopefully this set piece will be a little bit more efficient, but it won't because it could go straight back out again. Devine with a second opportunity to Osho. He doesn't really have any other options. It has to go back to Charles, back to Kirk. This looks very familiar from the last set piece we had. Fiorini with the ball to Fagan to Yeats. And Yeats just... I don't even know at this point. We are so... For, for a team that really has lost one game, I think in the last 12 or 13 games, we can sometimes go from absolute brilliance to some awful play and some terrible basic passing. Right, we have a, just before half time. Kirk with the ball to Charles. Can we create something from this just before half time? Osha with a big ball forward finds Fagan in a little bit of space. Takes a shot from range. Unfortunately, he doesn't even get it on target. He had a couple of men in front of him, but decided to go for goal himself. And coming into half time, it is honours even, one all, going into the second half. Assistant manager says that he's happy with the performance. I'm going to point the finger. It's time for everyone to dig in. 
Maybe I am being a little bit harsh on the players. There is a number of, of positive ratings in the side. But uh, but distinctly, our strikers up front are completely absent in today's game. And after 60 minutes, let's make a couple of changes. I'm going to leave Fagan out wide because uh, he is doing fantastically in that Ram Deuter role. Thinking I'd take Taylor Crosto off and bring Daly on for him. Uh, straight swap into that pressing forward. Fiorini hasn't really done much either in this game, so I'm going to bring on Adebayi for him, see how those changes take effect, and hopefully try and push for another goal. I don't really want to go attacking, so I'm going to encourage the players a little bit more, but we do have a highlight here from the free kick. Osho has the ball to Charles. Passing between and looking for a, a, an opportunity. But Charles manages to get a little bit of space. Can he get the cross in? He waits too far. Goes to Osho. But we work it into the penalty area. To Adebayi who takes a wicked shot. Unfortunately, it goes well over the bar and into the crowd. Right, 80 minutes on the clock. And things seem to have taken a little bit of a turn. Osho is struggling in centre midfield. But Fagan is also on a booking. Last thing I want is for him to get sent off. But Yeats is... Really struggling today. So I'm going to swap those two over. I'm going to keep Fagan on. Push him up front. We're going to bring on... Let's bring on Robson on that left-hand side. But we'll push him in as a inverted winger on support. Revert to our more traditional positions. While Charlton in the background have a highlight. I'm hoping this is just a highlight that happened. Because I went on the substitutes screen. But Charlton are looking to try and build it forward. Chips it forward for the original goal scorer. He's now in the penalty area. Chips it over Huddart. And that is absolutely pathetic. I don't know what is going on. We have really struggled in the two matches on today's episode. And I feel really frustrated because I've skipped over what was two, two very good games. We played very well where we scored six goals. And we've had two matches on today's episode where we have looked so good in the first half and have just fallen apart at the last. And are Charlton going to put the final nail in the coffin for this game? Russell with a free kick. Goes out wide to the goal scorer who scored a hat trick. Mgala? Something like that? Mbangala? I don't know. I don't care. But he has single-handedly torn us apart in this game. That says to me, if we do end up staying in the playoffs, which I'd like to think at this point we're going to stick it out, unless we go on a massively poor run at this point, unless we go on a poor run and go into the last couple of games of the season. This says to me that if we can't beat Wickham or Charlton, being in the playoffs is just going to be a token. I don't think we're going to go any further than that. And it definitely says we are not ready for the championship. The system says. We were underdogs and we gave it the bet. I don't think we did. I'm going to thrash my arms. I'm far from pleased. Which I've had to say twice on this episode, which is not, not what I wanted. We are still in the playoffs, so I'm trying not to be too negative about it. And it looks like Southend must have lost. Southend drew with Huddersfield. That that's why I mean we're actually that's why yes we're only two points but we're two points ahead of them now rather than the three. So we've managed to avoid dropping out the playoffs altogether there. But this is going to be an interesting couple of episodes. So just one more episode of the regular season and hopefully a playoff episode after that. Hopefully more than one, but we'll see how things go. And if you're looking forward to that, please give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of those episodes as soon as they release. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.